Didn't come back. Good. Well, smidge more. Just like roll back, maybe. Go. Good. We are going on a shakedown trip with the R1S and the Airstream. We've done a little bit of a range test while towing with this, um, but today we're gonna go take it on its first adventure. So we're going to a soccer tournament in Columbus, Nebraska, which is about how many miles down the road? 90. 90 miles down the road. So a little bit of a close trip, so we don't have to worry too much about if things don't go right, we're not too far from home. So. Uh, but we wanted to go get this little local trip and and we also try to make an adventure out of everyday things because we have a busy life so yeah. you know we want to make sure that we're still having fun and enjoying our summer yeah we'll show you all of our camp setup everything that we do with r1s and give you a good idea if the r1s is good for you yep let's go by the way the r1s looks ugly with a hitch okay go get in the car and um and that uh, uh and it's my tournament because I'm the only person that plays soccer. And, yeah. And um, I'm probably gonna. I'm trying to. I'm trying to kick. I'm trying to kick butt. Yeah. All right. Go get ready. Okay. They moved the trip odometers on us. So we have to think through it every time right now to remember where they're at. What's better when we have the camper, but we don't have the dog, so it's a little bit of a lie if I ask you if the R1T or the R1S is better. Uh, from this point forward, it seems the same. Yeah. What about you, Kennedy? I mean, you have the backs. There's not somebody kind of squishing it. Yeah, they have all this space to themselves. Oh, the big Gatorade bottle. You can't even see all it. There, there's his head. That's oh, all he said. Do you guys like the R1T or the R1S better? R1S. R1T for looks, but the R1S for trips. For looks, Interesting. Really? Not as, not a usual T. Oh, the S has the space for trips. The T has, I was going to say the strength. The strength. So we're getting 1.26 miles per kilowatt hour right now. We're about 30 miles into our trip. So we'll see how it all lands. Um, we don't have a charging stop on this trip, so. No, we, the winds were favorable. It was up to 1.3 something, and now the winds are kind of hitting us from the side, and it's like eight mile per hour wind with gusts up to 12, so I, I anticipate I'll probably stay there, to be honest, which is really good. One quick note is that I think that I feel it more like when a semi was passing us when we were on the two lane highway. If you've ever towed a camper before, like you kind of get sucked into it when they pass by you. And I was feeling that a little bit more than I have felt it in the R1T. Cause I don't know that I've really ever felt it in the R1T. Yeah, the R1T is just super stable. So stable. Yeah. So, but that's the only difference so far. So we'll check in here a little bit later. So we're just about there and I guess we haven't really explained what's happening. Um, so we are going up on Thursday to get a spot because there's like two tournaments happening here in this little small town in Nebraska. All of the hotels are booked fully. So we were like, we better get out as early as we can to try to get a spot. So Steve still has to work today and tomorrow, but we're gonna go drop the trailer off and then go back home and then come back on Friday night. This 
so the trailer is dropped off in the spot and we are headed back to Lincoln. So we got about 1. Point, what? 1. 1.17 on the way out for consumption with the R1S and our Airstream. Uh, I mean, it did really well, uh, no complaints or anything. So now it should be a pretty easy trip home. Well, we'll see. I mean, we have 31%. Well, we're gonna stop and charge. Eh, push it. <laughs> Gosh. Well, wish us luck then, I guess. It's been a while when you've been on an adventure and you don't even remember, do we plug in first, do we not? So we just got to the charger. I'm gonna give you a rundown on what we got for efficiency. So here we go, we went 61 miles and at 59 miles per hour and got 2.07 miles per kilowatt hour. So let's go plug in. So do you just plug in? So I think he yeah, just through the Rivian app, I just press start. So that started like, up pretty quick. Came in with nine percent. That's all you're gonna give us? Come on, seventy-four. Seventy-four. All right, let's figure out what the plan is with yeah. the children if they actually need to eat or not. <laughs> well. I don't have a whole lot of time. Yeah, so I know. We have to leave immediately, so we'll we'll figure out how I mean, what percentage we need and okay. Let's they do that. Ton of snack. So, oh, 76 kilowatts. Is that what it's saying out there too? It's hard to tell. I think it is. So this spot is at a gas station, so you have all the conveniences of a gas station. There's a Pizza Hut right across the street. There's a Mexican restaurant across the street the other way. So there's plenty of options for um, if you want food. I think there's like a Burger King or a Dairy Queen right here too. So lots of food choices. So it's a good little option. We got up to 77, 78 per second. Yeah, we're at 76 still, so yeah. So um, seems to be a decent little charging stop. So, supposedly, if you have a 100 volt like our um, Hummer. Hummer or Ionic 5 or something like that, you can get 150 or 60, I think. So. Oh. Not us in a Rivian. No. Just the green light bar. All right, so. We just got up to 15%, that's all we needed. We're sitting at 77 kilowatts right now. Added 9.69 .9 in eight minutes. And yeah, on our way. Total charge is $1.43. All right, let's do this. So on this leg home without the trailer, we, didn't, we wouldn't have had to stop normally if uh, we hadn't been trailing on the way out. We could have made it all the way out to Columbus and all the way back home. But because we were trailering on the way out, we did have to make just a quick little stop to top off. Um, but we didn't even, nobody wanted to even get out of the car. So we just left everybody in there, charged for a few minutes and on our way. So we'll finish this up and then we'll uh, see you back at home, do a quick check-in. And then we'll see you tomorrow for the ride back out to Columbus without the camper again. Rounding them out at 2.04 for the whole trip. No, uh, this thing. Oh, messed you up. You have to redo it. Oh, okay. So you have to refresh it. That's something new. Okay. So 2.06 is what we ended up with. Five. Oh. Six, five, six. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. So we're at five, maybe potentially at four by the time we get to our house. Nothing like bringing it down low on the trip. But uh, we wouldn't have had to even charge if we wouldn't have, if the car would have charged 100%, but it's being real weird. So. Yeah. Last night had a little 
a little bit of hiccups on. with charging. But now we gotta send Steve off to work and then we'll see you tomorrow when we take off for Columbus again. <laughs> at night. At night. Uh, to go back to our campsite and then we have to wake up early for soccer games and stuff on Saturday, but it should be a good fun weekend. All snug back there, Bella. Is that your spot? We are on the road to Columbus again. <laughs> this time, no trailer in tow. We are still in the R1S and we've got everybody. So Even Bella on. is hiding back there. We've got about 91 miles to go. Um, so we'll let you know how that goes. No charging stops or anything. We're charged up to 83% and we are, it should be a pretty easy breezy drive. And uh, I think that the dog, definitely prefers this <laughs> setup Already. over the, the truck because she just got in did a little circle and laid down and she's been happy ever since so we'll uh we'll see how the rest of the trip goes yes there's the red panda we're going camping we're going camping they're bringing back an oldie but a goodie Sometimes people ask us how we take care of our house also while doing all the adventures that we do. We really try to automate as much as possible. One thing that did catch our attention was this Gardena mower. They sent that to us and we installed it. It was super easy to install. It took less than an hour. Our backyard is pretty big and it's able to take care of that. There are some learning curves with installing it. You know, don't be like me, follow directions exactly correct. Some tips outside of the directions would be to mow the lawn super short before you put that guide wire down. There are learning curves with actually uh, the mower too. Uh, with that being said, it does get hung up on some stuff. For us, it is our swing set. And then now that we added a trampoline, it does get hung up on that. We did have it down with just the swing set where we could go a couple weeks before we had to get it unstuck, which is pretty good, to be honest. As far as edging goes or weed eating, you do have to do that around the perimeter about every two weeks for us. Uh, it just depends how fast your grass grows. Uh, it does have three settings on it. Uh, we have it to the tallest, which still is fairly short. It is, you know, fully electric. It goes back to its base, recharges, and goes and does its thing. We'll definitely put a link in the description below for this thing because we do really enjoy it. We had a great but bit rainy weekend, including a storm I thought might end up dropping a tornado for a second. But we got all the games in and Oliver's team ended up placing second in the tournament. The campsite was free with 50 and 30 amp electrical hookups, so charging was a breeze. She's all hooked up and ready to go. You ready? Yeah. You happy to have your own space in the R1S? Hey there, soccer star. I made it to the finals in my tournament, but we lost and um, I got best medal for winning second place. Nice. Good work, dude. At least we had no dance today. Go get in there. Um, did you move over ten No, not that I know of. <laughs> Ollie, your dad found them. This is the chaos that it takes for us to get on the road. Oh, on the other side. <laughs> oh man.
So we are on the road. The winds are going to be straight out of the north. It's going to be kind of favorable. I mean, it's going to be into the side of us. We kind of sink a little bit south. So, you know, not, uh, not ideal, but not terrible either. Temperature's about 71 degrees. Nice, cool, beautiful day. It's been all up and down all over the place, but right now it's a, a beautiful day. And no charge stops, we're at 85%. Zero four miles per kilowatt hour and we ended with 15 percent i think we said we started with like 86 or 96 which was high but uh yeah there you go all right so the first like real towing with the r1s and it did a pretty good job but i would say you can definitely feel the trailer behind you more with the r1s versus the r1t which lines up with what we figured out uh, before when we towed with it so yeah. it was perfectly fine when the wind was behind us or straight on well just behind us I guess but then from the side it would, did kind of sway a little bit yeah but not not much yeah it but, was it still wasn't bad yeah you just felt it more you yeah know, you get That's used to a better way of putting it yeah you get used to the r1t where you just don't, don't feel, feel it, it. Yeah. and so then if there's any little bit you're like oh it's definitely more noticeable but Overall, I mean, it still did a great job. You can't beat a free weekend of camping yeah. um, with free charging for your car and everything else. So, like front, yeah, like, waterfront. It was, yeah. it was perfect. But you know, overall, happy with how it did, and the kids definitely were happier, and the dog was definitely happier with the amount of space. But um, yeah, what did it end up getting? Uh, one point zero four. Okay, which we did about sixty sixty five. So yeah, yeah. So. But if you like this adventure, we've got a lot more coming up this summer with the Hummer, the R1S, probably throwing some R1T stuff in there. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along. Leave us a comment. Would you do this with the R1S? And we'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah.